Thanks, Chairman. And uh, I think it's the first time in a long life of activism that I've actually spoken at a meeting that was chaired by a military man, even if uh, ex. So I hope it's not a, a, a secret creeping dictatorship or anything, uh, uh, Tom, since, since you announced yourself as a, a captain there at the beginning. Um, to answer directly uh, uh, Bruno's uh, last question, uh, what Ireland uh, would do in joining NATO is to endorse and be part of a further division of the world into antagonistic, capitalist and militaristic blocs, uh, NATO based on the West, Russia and some others, China and some others, and to give a further twist to a world where competing interests of major global elites, capitalists, etc., uh, arming themselves to the teeth in competition with each other uh, for ever increasing, uh, for the resources of our world and ever increasing uh, profits, and the military nightmare that historically has uh, given rise to and would increasingly and will increasingly give them rise to unless we change the system. So there is an enormous amount involved in reality in this. In this state, our people, our, this country would long ago be part of a, a military alliance, except for the firm decision and intention and will of the Irish people that they will not tolerate that. But if it was up to our political establishment, we would be in a military alliance, NATO or otherwise, uh, long ago. And all you have to do is look at the last uh, several decades when the establishment parties, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and Labour, uh, all in uh, governments that cooperated with imperialist aims, military aims, war aims, adventures, etc. Vietnam was an example. They're fueling at Shannon, ongoing during the uh, Iraq war, etc. Re rendition flights. We couldn't uh, uh, persuade the Minister uh, for Defence or the Minister for Justice even to search the planes going through Shannon that we suspected were carrying. Uh, 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 hostages by the uh, US in case that they offended the uh, uh, US. And then Bruno did point out the last uh, EU treaties, which did absolutely advance the militarization, the process of militarization of the European Union and enshrined a process of militarization. Uh, in the Lisbon Treaty, uh, for example, it's the first time that the EU armaments industry was given a formal place in a European Union treaty. And the role of the European Defence Agency was essentially, is essentially to coordinate the armaments industry in the EU, make it an integral part of EU operations, and its tasks include implementing any measures needed to strengthen the industrial and technological base of the defence sector and to participate in defining a European capabilities and armaments policy. In other words, a further twist to the criminal expenditure uh, uh, on arms that is such a feature of the European Union as indeed it is of NATO and <coughs> other major countries while millions starve in, uh, in our uh, world. The uh, Lisbon Treaty, of course, did also provide for the first time for permanent structured cooperation uh, between EU states themselves providing for internal military alliances inside the EU with a view, quote, to the most demanding missions. Uh, and these kinds of missions involved are in Article 43, joint disarmament, military advice and assistance, tasks of combat forces in crisis management, uh, uh, and uh, etc. So there has been a huge push towards militarization and indeed the, 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 the likes of a, a military alliance in the EU and our uh, establishment has gone along with that. The extent to which they push it will obviously de depend on uh, when the Irish people will rise up in revolt uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to that. Um, uh, Mr. Raz Mussen, the General Secretary of NATO, wants us to uh, join, um, but uh, we have seen the real face of NATO in Libya uh, as uh, a matter of fact. There was a people's revolt began in Benghazi. It had elements of a real people's revolution. The danger for the West was that it would go and take an independent direction. NATO intervened, not to save civilians in any sense, 
but to uh, ensure that it had control of the forces that, would, that they brought and helped to bring into contention and to control the oil and the gas uh, 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 contracts, etc., or however major say uh, upon them. We do not accept this cover of NATO being uh, the, this uh, sweet humanitarian organization. They were silent if tens of thousands of Tamils were slaughtered by the regime in uh, Sri Lanka, for example, in Pakistan, they're silent as thousands die at the hands of the criminal drone attacks uh, and, uh, and uh, so forth. Now, the armaments and military expenditure is one of the ongoing obscenities in our world, and NATO is responsible, if I'm correct, for about 75% of global military uh, 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 spending. And it is a feature of the European Union itself, supposed to be a, a, near, a, a space of peace, democracy and solidarity, that the establishment in the European Union has insisted that the bailout states, for example, maintain their level of military expenditure. In the last 10 years, Greece has spent an average 4% of GDP on the military. And Germany and other states insisted that any contracts that were in existence with their arms uh, producers should be uh, uh, maintained and honored, while the Greek people were driven and are being driven into, pol into poverty. Finally, uh, Chairman, the, only, the, the, the way forward for our world is not more militarism, more militarization, more military alliances. It's to break with that. It's to break with the armaments industry and to break with militarization. And, it's to, uh, and that means breaking with capitalism from a socialist perspective. As long as you have capitalism and antagonistic global elites uh, vying <coughs> for domination and for profits, then you will have the wars and the conflicts that go with it. And ordinary people and working people and poor people are and will be the, uh, the victims of that. So we want a different uh, policy where uh, we share our resources, where the resources are turned from arms, uh, armaments, etc., to putting that massive technique and technology uh, 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 for the benefit of humanity, for resolving our problems, environmental, hunger, and uh, uh, so forth. Uh, a democratic and socialist future, in my view, that is the direction in which we should go and discuss and begin the discussion how we get there, not this dead end of horror upon horror of military alliances, military expenditure, and the suffering and the war, and all that goes with it.